Hi there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be having a look at this fella which is very big. In fact on that screen there it looks gigantic. This is the Sun Sun HW5000 and this was sent to me by Pete. Thank you very much Pete and apologies for taking a long time to actually get to shooting this video. Uh, as you know I've had numerous things going on. <laughs> which have consumed day after day after day so uh, hopefully those things are coming to an end now okay so power consumption for this fella is 40 watts plus 9 watts because it does have a UV light which is situated under there I'll show you how the water gets into that in a second um, the, the maximum head from the pump to the highest point it'll pump to is 3.8 meters which is well what would 3.9 be 3.3 is what is that 12 foot no 12 13 that's about 13 feet for you guys in the US that's quite a good head and the output is 4600 liters per hour again for you guys in the US I think that'll work out at about 1200 1200 and something maybe it's 1250 gallons per hour so it has got a really powerful pump in here and also because of the vast size of it you would think it would hold a hell of a lot of media and you would be right and also you'd be wrong I will say that when I was looking under here to find out where the pump was situated and where the UV was situated I noticed that these two little holes here one two don't have any screws in whereas these ones do and they're clearly made for screws so whoever put this together has actually left the screws out of here I don't think it's going to matter because this thing is just a removable like shield but uh, that is a bit of an oversight I would have liked to have seen those screws in there so we've got two power supplies one is for the pump one is for the UV and around the top here Keeping this top section onto the bucket of the filter is a really good clip. That's how simple it is to take off. Now compare that to the FX5, FX6, well FX range of filters and you've got to be fanning on with those knobs and then taking them off. It's a right far on. That is a good solution and it's reasonably well made. Should last okay. And then on the top We've got an in and an out. The in goes all the way down to the bottom, over the UV, swirls around in the bottom, and then it rises up the sides. And much like the FX range, it goes down through all of the trays, and then gets sucked out by the pump and blown out back to the tank. Okay, so before I bring the camera in, I'll just lift the trays out using these little rods that go down the side just like they do on the FX range of filters and they detach in much the same way as well like that it's basically a Chinese copy with a few tweaks to get around any sort of patent and issues and that's our trays, there's three of them and I think they're approximately ten and a half inches diameter well at least across the usable part of it probably about 12 inches diameter in total then inside the filter that is our in pipe so that goes all the way down there that's our uv so it travels over the uv light and then it bleeds up around the outside travels up the outside of the trays goes down through the trays and is sucked out by the pump i'm not quite sure whether you can see it but the there is a little recess down there that's where the water goes down sucked out by the pump and blown back to the tank and then on the back of the filter here you've got your drain attachment so you get a fitting that goes on there and you can just drain it off into a bucket the seal that goes around the outside of here is lovely and thick the size of that and it feels good it feels good quality so that should last you for years in fact the construction of everything on this filter is pretty good see that very well made, it's got reinforcements and it just looks like the top of RT2 
R2D2. <laughs> God. Yes, that's what he's called, isn't it? R2D2. That little annoying robot thing of Star Wars, anyway. You can tell I'm not a Star Wars fan. Okay, let's have a look what comes from the manufacturer in the trays. Top tray is uh, some token gesture of plastic balls and a fine pad. Next tray down is a slightly more usable uh, ceramic rings. Not many of them though, certainly not even enough to cover the bottom of here. And a fine white pad. And then the bottom tray is just exactly the same as the top tray. With a few balls and a fine white pad. So given the filter media, or lack thereof, that comes with it, it's pretty obvious what to do with this, just to set it up properly. Considering the fact that the water travels from the top to the bottom, top tray would be used for our coarse, medium, fine foams. Filter media in the next one, filter media in the next one. Very, very simple. If you're using carbon or any sort of chemical media, ideally that wants to be last in the system, so it would go on the bottom of the bottom tray. But you don't need carbon unless you need carbon. You don't need chemical treatments unless you need chemical treatments. So for a fit, healthy filter, with, you know, in a well set up tank where you don't have any problems, all you need is mechanical filtration, biological filtration. And we might even be able to get a little bit more media underneath this pad in the top tray because it is quite deep. It's what will that be? Probably the best part of two and three quarter inches, possibly even three inches deep. So it's a decent size. So that is the amount of biological filter media that came included with this filter. And considering how big this filter is, that is not much. Okay, so that's it, fully set up now, and I'll pull it apart from the top down to let you see what we've got in. So in the top tray, we've got a coarse pad, which is bumpy. You can see all those little hills and valleys in there. That vastly increases the available surface area on here, so it'll go ages before it needs cleaning, compared to if it was a flat foam. So that's our top. Beneath that, we've got a medium density version of that foam. And as far as the PPIs go, that one is probably about 20. This one would be about 35 or thereabouts. Now in the UK, we tend not to use PPI measurements, really. We we'll just say coarse, medium and fine, you know. But I know you guys in the US like the PPI measurements, so roughly 20 and roughly 35. And underneath those, we've got one of the fine pads, which was supplied by Sun Sun. And then beneath that, I've managed to put one kilo of BioHome Ultimate in there, followed by two trays of the same media. Each one of those trays weighs 2.7 kilos. So in total, we've managed to fit 6.4 kilos of filter media into this system. For you guys in the US, I will put those calculations along the bottom of the screen and also everything will be in the video description and in the pinned comment. Oh God, that feels a hell of a lot heavier now. Yes, it does. <laughs> Come on, that over here. And this is the problem. <laughs> These pipes kind of move a little bit because they're meant to come out for cleaning purposes. So getting a heavy set of trays on top is quite difficult, but once you get the first one lined up, it's not too bad. Of course, you can just put them in one at a time, which is really easy, but then you don't have the benefit of being able to put these on to lift them out. Ah, that's one. There we go. It's like one of the labors of Hercules, that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll bring the camera in just to show you where the water comes up and give you a top-down view. You see around the outside there, got all those fins on the outside of the trays, and that's where the water comes up. So you've probably got, I don't know, maybe it's the best part of three quarters of an inch to an inch, all the way around here for the water to come up and then go down through the trays. And if you're using very porous filter media like the BioHome 
or like some other scented glass medias or even like a good quality ceramic ring and you're worried about small bits breaking off if you're particularly brutal when you clean the filter uh, and going down into the pump you can of course put maybe it's a medium or even a coarse pad in the bottom of the bottom tray just to catch any bits i've never known it being a problem but i know some people do that just as a belt and braces approach and you see how easy that top went on and comes off i like that i really do like that method of fixing the top very similar to the filter clear filters from Oasi. That's exactly how they operated, and that always worked very well. In fact, the, the seal that goes around the outside looks exactly the same as the Oasi one as well. Yeah, even these, you know, they're nicely greased. Pretty good. Right, as far as tank size and stock recommendations go for this fella. Because it will easily hold 6.4 kilos or 14 pounds, I'll round that up to 6.5 kilos because you would easily get that in there. So 6.5 kilos or over 14 pounds, it would easily be suitable for a tank up to 650 litres or 171 US gallons if the tank was normally stocked and you were expecting to see a full cycle, which is the reduction of ammonia nitrite and nitrate. Also, if it was heavily stocked, you could halve that. So 650 would become 325 litre tank if it was heavily stocked and you wanted to see a full cycle. Or 85 to 86 US gallons for a full cycle. Just a quick note on a full cycle. It will happen if the conditions are right. That's why I always give two figures, one for normally stocked and one for heavily stocked. Certain things will help, like good tank maintenance. If you're hoovering out the fish waste and then you're eating food once a week or even once a fortnight, uh, that will help to maintain good filter health because everything isn't then on the filter. It's being removed before it gets a chance to rot down and really produce any nasty sort of side effects. Also, the choice of water conditioner is imperative. It took me... Well, I had a shop for 20 odd years and it took the, probably the best part of a decade after that of talking to thousands of people all over the world in various stocking scenarios, various water conditions, various amounts of media to, to work out how much media is needed to achieve a full cycle, but also what prevented a full cycle from developing in the vast majority, like 99% of the cases where people could just couldn't achieve a full cycle. And that is the conditioner. And it shouldn't be that important. It shouldn't prevent a full cycle happening. But certain ones do. So enough of that. Let's get on to what fittings come with this thing. So we've got... Pipes, spray bar, your inny and outy. We've got your shut off valves at the top of here. Very similar to the ones on top of the uh, FX6. The quick release things, just take them off, shut them off. Well, shut them off before you take them off. Shut them off, take them off, take your filter away, clean it, put it back, click them back on, open them up, you know, it's ready to go. It also comes with that which sits on the side of your tank. Again, it's got an innie and an outie. That's your power supply. And that is actually your electronic flow control. So you can control the flow of this filter. To control the flow of this filter, especially if you're using the tank size recommendations that I've just given you because 4,500 litres is quite a lot. And if you've got fish that don't like a heavy flow, you may just have to knock it down a little bit. I don't run these filters, they aren't mine. I don't want to send everything back wet. These are sent by viewers for me to basically show you guys how the water flows through them and to give you an indication of the most effective way to set them up with regard to the foams and where the media should go. 
I've got quite a simple job in doing that because it's pretty straightforward, you know. What I always tend to try and do in these videos is give you an indication of the quality of construction of the filters and just the, their overall layout and practical features. So starting from the top down, obviously this band that goes across is a very practical feature. It's well enough made. The whole bucket seems really well made. The fittings seem decent quality. The pipe is okay. It comes with it. It's a ribbed pipe. It's similar to the Fluval one. I don't think it's as good a quality as the Fluval one. And in fact, I don't think the fittings themselves are as well. I know they're not as good quality as the Fluval. The Fluval ones are like ridiculously well made, you know. Um, of the pump and the UV means that to do any sort of maintenance you've got to empty everything out and tip this thing upside down which is okay because you know you just maintain these things I don't know maybe it's once a year once every two years when you're doing a water change take everything out tip it upside down change your UV bulb once a year ideally uh, service the pump you know clean the impeller out give it a bit of a scrub put everything back together it's not a problem but it does kind of reduce the capacity of this bucket somewhat so it looks massive but it doesn't hold a vast amount of media the FX4 a certain amount of bacteria living on a certain amount of filter media so if you can't get enough filter media or suitable environment into your system for all the bacteria to live on you're not going to process all of the fish waste uh, flow rate is huge 4500 liters an hour or roughly 1250 us gallons per hour that's big this although i couldn't find one available in the uk or strangely in the us um i found it on well, i think it was australian websites and it seems to cost less quite a bit less than the fx6 so if you're on a budget this would probably be a better choice hasn't got the name of Fluval. It hasn't quite got the construction quality, but it will hold more media and it does pump a hell of a lot of water. So it's something that's probably worthy of consideration. However, run these filters. You guys, or at least some of you guys watching this, will have ran one of these filters. If so, can you please put some sort of short report in the comment section down below? of you know how you found it how you what's it like uh, has it lasted well enough does the pump pump as much as it uh, purports to pump what's the digital reduction in the flow like you know is it effective uh, and just just how you found using it you know over the last few months or years that is very potential buyer that is way more important than anything that I've just said I just look the functionality and the practical side of things you really want to be taking advice as to whether you should buy something from somebody who owns that particular thing and has run it for a long time and then they can tell you everything about it so please share your experiences down below that would be much appreciated not only by me but by everybody considering getting one of these thanks again to Pete for sending me this it's going back with you know quite a, a valuable amount of filter media in it for him for his troubles for sending me this i hope he appreciates it <laughs> i certainly appreciate him sending it because you know from a selfish point of view it helps me because when people phone up send me an email and they say i've got filter x y or z i know how it works where the water flows through it strengths and weaknesses and how much media can fit inside it. So if they say, look, I want media for a HW5000, I can then say, okay, I know exactly how much media fits in there. You'll get 6.5 kilos in, no problem. That makes my job so much easier. So making this long running series of videos, it, it does become samey. Certainly for me, when I'm watching them back, I'm, I'm thinking, how does anybody other than people who are interested in that particular filter watch these videos? My voice is the most boring thing in the world, you know. Editing these YouTube videos for me is just torture. 
I kind of, I'm going to stop talking because that's just more to edit. Anyway, I obviously still enjoy doing it. I must enjoy the torture because I've made about 1100 videos for this particular channel. But if you're interested in another channel, I do have numerous other interests, which are on my Thousand Yard Stair channel. And I'll put the link to that in the video description, as well as links to this filter, if I can find it anywhere available online, and any other useful videos and information. Thanks for watching. I shall see you in the next video.